two. two. There it goes. <laughs> Hello, we are back and what? Hi there. I, we've, we've done several of these now. I don't even know what number it is anymore. I Me wanted neither. to say, oh, it's number such and such, but I don't know. See, that's good though. Yeah. <laughs> One of many. <laughs> One of many, yes. And there, you know where these are posted to? Just, just so you know, in case you're not in our Facebook group, you can always see these at our Peel University site. All of the lives are posted with your question and it's time date stamp so you can find your answer really quick. Perfect. But yeah, right. so let's Let get started. All right, so our first question comes from Amelia and Alice. They were two very similar questions, so we consolidated them. Um, she says, hi there, I don't currently have a platinum cleanser to use. Could you recommend a CeraVe or Cetaphil cleanser that would be okay to use pre-peel? Previously, when I received in-office peels, I was told to apply a gentle cleanser, CeraVe hydrating cleanser or something gentle a week prior to my peel. Outside of that time, I used a cleanser prescribed by my dermatologist, with, which is a sulfur, a sulfur, sulficide, sulfur, yeah, basically something. a sulfur cleanser. Sulfur cleanser, yeah. Yeah. Um, says not to apply something hydrating right before the peel. That's what her dermatologist says. That's what our, said. yeah, our directions say the same thing. It doesn't matter what cleanser you're using. We actually prefer you to use an acid-based cleanser. I mean, like here's our AB cleanser. I would tell anybody mm -hmm. that's part of your peel prep. Right. You know, you want to be minimizing the dead skin buildup on your face. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to use an acid type cleanser every day. I mean, it's, if you have super sensitive skin, okay, go ahead and use a Cetaphil or whatever, yeah. or alternate them. Post peel, because she said, is there a Post third cleanser good. I should use for after my peel? Then I still use whatever. Like I yeah. use AB every day. I use AB when I'm peeling. There is no time I don't use it. If for some reason you're mm -hmm. super sensitive, well then go ahead, you know, yeah, use a milder one. Yeah, if she's sensitive after, she could use the Cetaphil. For sure. You know, if she's feeling. But it doesn't really matter. Like it doesn't, you use whatever cleanser you want. Use your sulfur cleanser. Okay, so Ginger from Winnipeg, Manitoba is Fitzpatrick too. She has two questions. First question is, I have a lot of dark freckles. I am a redhead. Do I need to use a hyperpigmentation serum before I apply TCA? So, right, yeah, that's the Fade Bright mm -hmm. that we talk about. And yes. usually you have to prep with that. If you have ethnic skin tone, you're gonna run mm -hmm. a risk of getting post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But for someone like you with very light skin, you're dealing with freckling, you don't need to apply it because most likely you're not gonna get PIH. But if you want to fade your freckles, and not everybody does, if you want to, then go ahead and you can start using Fade Bright every single day. It doesn't have to be just as a peel prep. Okay, second question. How close to the eye and lid can I go using TCA20 on a Q-tip? Well, whatever you're doing, that's, that's strong. Did you say she lid? She said lid, oh, yeah. eye and lid. How, okay. So if you're doing a TCA20 on your face, mm -hmm. you're not really doing an eye peel with that. You, you want to watch this whole orbitable, orbitable, oh my gosh, yeah. orbital bone. Area, yeah. Right, wherever that ends, you really don't want to get your peel any closer unless you're specifically doing an eye peel. Mm -hmm. In which that case, if you're doing an eye peel, Take a look at this. We're using Absolutely. the 7% to start with at about three layers. You're gonna use some Vaseline at your lash line and your inner and outer corners so that no acid you know, seeps into your eye yeah, area. Yeah, form a nice barrier. And then you're gonna apply that quite dry so there's no drips, but I wouldn't just, I wouldn't use a Q-tip with TCA20 that close. I mean, don't get, don't get yeah. any closer than here. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Okay, so our next question comes all the way from Saudi Arabia, Fitzpatrick wow. Four, um, and says, hello everyone, thank you for being always here. I've made spot treatment three months ago, and after that I made a combo peel of Jesner, TCA, and Dream Peel all over my face for one, oh, let's see, all over my face for the other three months. Now, after the last two peels, I noticed some white patches around the areas that were made with the spot treatment. They are hypopigmented. So I need to know what I should do now. Should I stop doing peels or continue? And should I continue to use Fade Bright to prepare my skin or not as it is a melanin inhibitor? So it will make the hypopigmented areas worse. Well, yeah. number one, that is way, way, way too strong and especially too yeah. strong, I would say, for your dark skin. Fitzpatrick 4. I agree. 
um, you're layering Jesner's, you're layering TCA 20, 20. and Dream Peel. I mean, so it looks yeah, to me heavy. like you probably skipped right over the TCA 13 where we say to start, yeah. or you, you, I don't know where you started, but you can't start with an advanced peel like Jesner plus TCA plus Dream Peel. That is an advanced method for a reason. You work sure. up doing some TCA peels for a while, like a session or at least three or four of them. And then you do some Jesner peels for a while, a few of those. Do a dream peel or two separately. Now you're looking, you know, four, five, six months in, yeah. at least before you're even thinking about combining two of those. So you went way too hard, way too fast. And that could be why you're dealing with hypopigmentation. That was just way too strong for your skin. I would recommend being very gentle to your skin now and hope that that pigmentation can come back. Right. I would use products maybe like Regenerate, I think I have, you know, um, to help stimulate new yeah. skin tissues. I would use copper, things that are like regulating new skin, but yeah. I wouldn't be doing a peel like that ever mm -hmm. Again, for I wouldn't many, continue many months. to fade bright on the hyper hypo pigmented areas either because I wouldn't either. No, if, if you can, if you if those are like specific spots that you can avoid, yeah, you know, put something else on there, like a you know a little aquaphor. You yeah. put your cream on first, and then put the fade bright on the rest of your face um, to try to even that out. But you need to do to do like way 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 milder peels. You know, like maybe maybe a Jesner, right. one or two layers in the future, or a TCA 13, or a 10, cut your 20 in half Right, in or the even future. the Jesner on its own, like you said, in the next month, the Dream Peel on its own, something yes, along those Yes, but don't be so aggressive anymore. That's too much for your skin, clearly. It's telling you that. Okay, so Tina from Wisconsin asks, do your products have an expiration date if unopened? For the most part, it's gonna be two years. Mm -hmm. I did actually see, because we were doing new prep A and B labels, those are three years. Hmm. But for the most part, I mean, the peels yeah. are two years unopened, up to one year year once it's open. Same with all the rest of the products. I think vitamin C is one year. Okay, so this one comes all the way from England. <laughs> um, initials NG, Fitzpatrick of five. Can I layer the 50 lactic peel from Platinum Skincare? I mean the first and second pass. Well, you know, when you're yeah. doing a lactic peel, you're not really layering anything. Right. So that's a TCA or a Jesner. Maybe they mean like if thing. they're doing it this way and then they do it this I way. I guess, yeah, we did have once upon a time in the directions, like to make sure you've got really good coverage, like you could put anything. it on vertically yeah. and horizontally just to make sure it's really good coverage. But I mean, you don't want to do more than that. And then that's a timed peel. So obviously the most important thing is how long you're leaving that on. I would try at least five minutes the first time and then maybe 10, 15. It's a milder acid. All right, next question is also from England. Um, you go as the person, oily skin. Can your lactic acid 50 actually help to lighten the skin? Can continuous use of lactic acid help reduce wrinkles for real? For real. Yeah, for <laughs> um, real. You know, <laughs> nothing's going to lighten your natural yeah. skin color ever. You know, whatever your, your lightest skin coloring is, you know, when you don't have your clothes on, usually your butt or your, your breast area, sometimes... Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe underarms for some people, those are gonna be lighter, that's your normal skin coloring. So we're not gonna get any lighter than that. Nothing is bleaching your skin. What peels and lactic and things will do will help to um, remove the excess pigmentation that's right. making your skin darker than your normal color. But I don't want people to think that these are bleached. There's so many people that are always wanting to know, how can I lighten my skin? Well, you can't yeah. lighten your natural skin color. I mean, maybe you can, you know, buy a doctor with a prescription, but okay. it will help with wrinkles too. Actually, that person has a second oh. question. Uh, I am using Platinum Skincare Lactic 50, been using it since late January, was wondering how long until I start seeing my dark spots lighten. So since January. I am January, using it majorly for hyperpigmentation. You've been using it since January, but how often are you using it? Yeah. Are you doing this once a week? I suggest you do this once a week. It's a yeah. mild peel, little to no visible Consistency flaking. Consistency is key for that sure. That is in SPF. You have to be using SPF 50. Yes. Otherwise, if you just walk back out in the sun, you're just, you could actually be in a worse place if you're doing peels right. and then walk out in the sun. You're going to get more sun damage. So SPF, and then add some Fade Bright into there. I don't know if that was in there. Fade Bright, Retinol, things like that yeah, will no, lighten. Yeah, didn't mention that. No mentioning of Fade Bright. Okay, so moving along, Lisa has dry skin from Ohio. Recently did a 20% TCA peel with two layers. I had very light flaking, no peeling, just dry flakes. 
I prepped the skin before, used alcohol immediately before playing. What am I doing wrong? And do I need to wait three to four weeks before I do a second peel? It's been two weeks on... 324? 324 so since the peel. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's today. So it's been two weeks since she did a TCA two layer, TCA 20% two layer. So you say that I didn't get any peeling, but I just got flaking. So in my, in my mind, peeling and flaking mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. Dead skin is coming off, whether you see it in tiny little flakes or some people, you know, they'll let it sit on there and it just stays together and comes off with a big sheet. Like, I don't do that. For the yeah. most part, I start getting the little flakes. I scrub them. Or even if I do get a little bit of a sheet, a lot of I get all up. that off. Yeah. I don't even know what that looks like. Flaking equals peeling. If you want more flaking, you either need to do wetter layers. Yeah. Your layers could have been too dry. Yeah. You know, if you're like wringing that out and you barely have anything on there, then your skin doesn't have yeah. any acid to react with. So make sure it's wet mm -hmm. enough. And then next time apply another layer if you want more or add some luminosity if you want more or right. add some dream peel as a final layer. All for of those sure. will give you more peeling that you're looking for. And everybody's skin reacts differently, you know. I mean, I did ran the peel machine with TCA 20 and my fingers have been peeling, you know, and I ran that last Friday and today is Thursday and I've been peeling for days. Still, it's like you could go rob a bank and no yeah, one would ever catch you no because you have no fingerprints. Nope. No one was here. Now's my time. Okay. All right. So <laughs> Teresa from Lakewood <laughs> Ranch, Florida has uh, combination skin, Fitzpatrick 3, uh, doing peels with Jesner and TCA 20 one layer of Jesner and four TCA 20. Wow. Then I top it with the dream peel. Wow. Peel works, but my melasma and hyperpigmentation always come right back right after. I have been doing a peel on face, neck, and chest every month. Looks great when the skin first peels off, then the melasma and hyperpigmentation come back before I can even do my next peel. Dermatologist prescribed a serum of 12% hydroquinone, 6% kojic, 2% niacinamide, 1% ascorbic acid to use every night for eight weeks. When can I put that on? Can I put that on leading up to the peel? Yes. And the night of the peel? Well, you know, if it's not causing, like, I don't know, it's got vitamin C. I don't have, it doesn't have acid in it, right? No, it wasn't ascorbic, um, but 2% yeah. kojic. That is something that I, even though my little note said probably not, but I would say you could definitely use that up until you put your peel on. Unless for some reason I've never used hydroquinone that high of a percent. Right. I know it is legitimate. high, yeah. Yeah, if that causes irritation or dryness or anything, then stop. Yeah. You know, I would stop it at least three, four days prior. If it doesn't and you've been using this for weeks, you're not having any problems, then keep using it till you do your peel. And I would say once you rinse your peel off, I would put it on again right there because it's going to penetrate really nice. It's going to um, go really deep in the skin. And then the next day, you don't need to worry about putting it on. You know, as after peels, your skin starts to kind of like thicken and dry and, and nothing's going to, you know, penetrate and go in there easily. So just so prep immediately after rinsing your acid, put it on and then put it away until you're done flaking. Well, somebody's alarm's going off here. That was my alarm from yesterday on my phone. Is that your leave phone? leave for an appointment, oh. yes. I just realized <laughs> that. I think somebody just went to shut it off for me. It's time for live. Yes. Okay. Um, don't want, to, she said she doesn't want to waste the prescription on dead crusty yeah, skin. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Wait till your skin's yes. done flaking. Um, yeah, I mean. But I'm saying, like, as soon as you yeah. rinse that peel off, oh, your skin is so primed to accept things really well, I would so put it on right there and then put some emo oil or something or healing oil on top of it. Okay. Uh, Janet has dry skin. She's from Australia. She said she's 66 years old and have read that some people say past a certain age, which is where I am, you should not do peels as the skin is too thin. Is this true? Well, if you think about peels and how they work, they actually thicken your skin. Well, they thin your skin and they thicken your skin. Yeah. So like, you know, you got your dead layers of skin here sitting on top of your face, you know, about 20 layers or so of dead skin. You don't want that there. You want the underlying layers where all your collagen, elastin, right. your dermis, you want that to thicken. And when you do chemical peels, it thins the top, gets rid of the dead skin, but the deep, deep layers, they get thicker and better. Yeah, and it's actually, you're gonna have better skin. If you're feeling dry or other, or you, you really do have 
thinner skin for some reason. There are skin thickeners like emo oil, regenerate. Uh, regenerate, all of those things can be put on, but I don't think you really need to worry about that. I think that's pretty infrequent. Perfect. All right, moving along. Gail has normal skin from England, Fitzpatrick 2. Hello, I am postmenopausal. I've had a full hysterectomy. I do various treatments to my skin, but nothing lasts. I did your 13 TCA, two passes, three on chin area, and was really bad, sore, etc. When finished peeling, skin was no different. Please advise. Well, I mean, your skin is irritated after a peel, and it can yeah. feel sore and And you don't have sunburned. to do two or three layers. Okay, so remember, consistency is key. Yeah. You know, you need to be using things like retinol every single night to keep your skin turning over really quickly. Um, then you also, when you're doing these peels, it's not just going to be one peel. Try to do three layers or four layers and make this strong peel, and that's going to be it. You are better off, especially if that causes irritation, to do one layer or two layers maximum mm -hmm. so you're not dealing with all that irritation and then just do that you know you know every three weeks yeah. do you know one or two layers instead of trying to add on too much because then you can you know not have to deal with that or try a different acid but i i really feel like tca is the best for anti-aging absolutely okay so the next question comes from maria Lateo Grant. <laughs> uh, she has normal skin. Uh, she's from Florida. Fitzpatrick of three. Can a mature skin of an 80-year-old undergo TCA 13 peels for age spots? Absolutely. And we have a lot of customers yeah, that we sure do. reach out. Yes. I'm 80-something. I'm 90. I'm 70s. That is very common. And yes. there's no reason that you can't do peels. Yeah, None at all. I sure. would just, especially... Get your skin turning over before you start to do peels, do your prep. So, you know, definitely use retinol or retin-A or whatever you have to get your skin prepared because the more prepared you are, if you're using this for a few weeks and you do a peel, you're gonna heal faster too. Okay, so Andy from Ohio has normal skin, Fitzpatrick two. I did a TCA 20 peel, no frosting with one layer. I dipped a Q-tip in the TCA to spot treat it it immediately frosted, swelled, and burned, leaving pink skin once it was healed. It is still pink a month later. That is the only area that peeled. Next month, I did one layer of Jesner and then one layer of TCA-13. I did not peel at all. Why would I not be peeling after these? And why did I react so poorly with the spot treatment? Well, those are two very different peels you did. Yeah. On your first peel, you did a TCA-20 mm -hmm. with another layer of TCA-20 with a saturated Q-tip. A super heavy, I guarantee, saturated Q-tip. So when you put that on, heavy. that was a wet blob yeah, right there. Too much. That went way deeper than you anticipated. Yes. And then the next time you did a peel, you did a Jesner and a TCA-13. So you're doing just two completely different peels that can't yeah. even be compared. I would go back to your TCA-13 and do more layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, maybe try a... Does she have pigmentation was this pigmentation nope. no it doesn't even no it didn't even say, say pigmentation so you could do you know one month do two layers of jesner the next month do you know two layers of tca 13 see which one works mm -hmm. best next month you know add another layer on because it's all about layering the more layers the more dead skin's going to come off right but don't be doing that tca 20 again mm -mm. until you are doing like five layers of tca 13 yeah, or much jesner better doing that lesser strength yeah and doing more layers and it is very common that it would still be pink a month later if it was a yeah, heavy it's spot like you treatment. did a cross treatment yeah. there really yeah, i mean you need common. to use nice healing things make sure it's protected from the sun so it doesn't get hyper pigmented yeah, i would start using copper you know regenerate emo oil things like that to heal Agreed. it next time you do a peel i would even if it's still pink i would i would even avoid that yeah area. you can just go right around that area yeah let it heal okay so sharon is from cornelius north carolina she says, hi, I've been spot treating H spots on my legs and arms with TCA 32 layers. I'm not seeing the results I'd hoped for. I'm applying the acid with the Q-tip and just finished my third treatment. Should I alternate with another acid or combine acids? More applications, please help. 
Well, that's a lot. You're doing two layers of TCA 30 and you're using a Q-tip, which is not a very good applicator because it might be wetter in some areas and drier in others. I would highly suggest using gauze, mm -hmm. number one. And she's spot treating just the age spots. Keep oh, in she's mind. just, yeah, just spot treating. Okay, that, and that's why I get spots the Q-tip. That pigmentation goes so deep. It does. You know. I would use Jesner, number one. Yeah. I would do probably a couple layer of Jesner. I would do my whole leg if I were you, to be right. honest. I mean, what? Or she could spot, spot, spot treat spot, 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 and spot. then every other peel do like a, an overall Do a full leg, leg. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I would do that with maybe like Jesner. Maybe do like a layer or two. There you go. Of Jesner everywhere. And then maybe spot treat that. But make sure your mm -hmm. Q-tip isn't like super, super wet like we were talking about with this other person a couple before. Just make sure you like push it on the side yeah. so it's not dripping. Right. And then go ahead and dab that on. But don't do two layers if you've got Jesner on there. But now you're gonna need to do more. I mean, we're talking six to eight treatments, normal right. for anybody, for anything. Now you're yeah. talking about problems and spots on the body, which is so, so, so much thicker. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take more peels than you think. Okay, next question is from Nancy. She has dry skin from Connecticut, Fitzpatrick of three. If dream peel <clears throat> is used alone, how long does it take to peel? Will it be flakes or pieces? Is it okay to use alone? It takes the same amount of time to peel as any other acid would take to peel. Mm -hmm. I find most people start yeah. average around day two or three and then, you know, go till day seven, eight, nine, right. ten, two to ten days. It's yeah. so varies. Always give yourself two weeks of recovery time. It, yeah. Even if you don't think you're going to need it. You know, just give yourself yeah. like two weeks if you have an event, uh, something planned. Because you, you don't want know. them little flakes in your hair. That's no. <laughs> what's going to happen. The ones on the outside have little white flakes And your here makeup and there. doesn't go on really well. You can wear not makeup. it's all off. But yeah, your makeup's not going to go on smoothly. It kind of stands out more. I Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> you, don't, you can't use powder. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Roxanne Ledger says she's from Louisiana, Fitzpatrick 3. I have lots of sunspots on my arms and legs from years of tanning. Which peel or products will be most effective in reducing or eliminating this damage? Currently using Fade Bright, Triple Treat, and TCA20. Well, that's good. You got two good ones that yeah. you're using. Fade Bright, Triple Treat, every single day. That's going to help. Yeah. SPF, of course, and you're not tanning yeah. now. SPF right. 50 or clothing to cover it, especially if you're out in the sun. Um, yeah, TCA is good. I tend to like Jesner a little bit better or a combination of Jesner and TCA because, you know, Jesner is for yeah. pigmentation mm -hmm. problems. It's, it's like resorcinol is in there and that's very much like hydroquinone. So you're, you're putting something that's <coughs> specialized in treating pigmentation. So I would do at least a layer or two of Jesner and then maybe one layer of Tony next time. And then as you go forward, you can add on either another layer of Jesner or another layer of Tony. And just then I think consistent. you'll get, just keep going. Yeah, keep, keep going. going. Okay, Sandy from New Jersey, her question is, could you please recommend the proper cleanser and toner to shrink pores? Well, I mean, there isn't necessarily a proper cleanser and toner to shrink pores. I, I will say retinol is number one mm -hmm. because it cleans out the inside of your pores and allows them to tighten. And that's not even instant. I mean, some of it's instant, but it's, it's long term. Right. You know, you want to use that for months. And you do have to think a little bit. Some acid cleansers and stuff will help because if you think about it, like your pore is like a V. Let's say that's your pore. Right. And you got dead skin over here built up and dead skin over here built up. It looks like it's bigger. When you take that dead skin off, it does appear yeah. a little smaller, but it's not really. You're not really shrinking pores by exfoliating. Only like the retinol where it exfoliates the inside of the pore and then causes okay. it to tighten over the course of months. That's the best thing you can do. All right. So Luce, do both. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Every night retinol. <laughs> Uh, Lucy from North Carolina, Fitzpatrick 3, what is the best peel for summertime? Definitely wearing sunscreen. So she's definitely wearing sunscreen, but she wants to know. I think the general consensus is most people like to do either a mandelic or a lactic peel. Yes, if you don't agreed. really want to see any flaking, just so minimal, then do the lactic. If you don't mind a little bit of dryness and a little bit of flakes, do the mandelic and then just wear a nice big hat, yes. get sunblock, and Sunglasses. you can go out by the pool. It doesn't matter. I do. I have my big giant head. I don't care. All right, uh, Mantra is the next question. It's from her, and she's from British Columbia, Fitzpatrick 5. Hello, Jen and Dora. Would my melasma cure with a peel? 
using Fade Bright Vitamin C and a moisturizer and sunscreen and Jesner peel. So she's got all the goods. Yeah, you just have to just keep using it and keep in mind that Mandelic is not like something that's curable. Oh, Mandelic. Melasma. Melasma. Yes. <laughs> it's nothing that is curable. Yeah. You are going to have melasma. That's, mm -hmm. that's a hormonal yeah. issue that a lot of people, I have it too. Battle. I have spots that I've had, I have a spot here. I have like a spot over here mm -hmm. that I've done, of course, every mm -hmm. kind of peel you could ever do. I've done laser treatments on it. Sure. I've done every. It is still there. It's like no, mm -hmm. you know. There's nothing you can do about that. You just and, and sunblock is so 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 important. Like just keep reapplying it when you're outside. It will get better, but you may have some that just don't go away right. ever, right. ever. But yours did lighten a little. It recently. did lighten. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. That is something yeah. to think about. That is something to think about. We have our new retinol formulation We're that will be coming it. out in a little bit. I mean, it's just a matter of yeah. now all the steps, new labels, new bottles, all that kind of stuff. But instead of just being the retinol, I think I talked about this a couple times ago, maybe it's going to be a combination of the retinol, the retinol to hide, and then that gran active retinol, gran active retinoid. And I cannot pronounce the big long one. Right. Panaculic, blah, blah, blah. I certainly can't. That one, <laughs> that one's in there and we have an awesome mixture. It's a little mid stronger so be a little bit stronger yeah. like the 0.10 will be 0.15 the 0.20 will be 0 0.25 0 0.35 0 0.55 will be luminosity mm. um yeah i did feel a little bit dry a little bit flaky and i swear i swear this is a little bit lighter than it used to be i remember you telling me that and if that week, yeah. really does continue then then i will change my mind and i will say melasma people must use right. this for real and i just may we'll see okay all right, so Lana is from Michigan, and she has a Fitzpatrick too. Love your peels and your YouTube channel. I am using the Fade Bright and have done a few mandelic acid and TCA peels. I am now pregnant, so I cannot use TCA. What is the best peel to help with post-acne pigmentation? I have red marks, not brown, or hyperpigmentation, I just want to even out my skin tone and decrease the, reg the well, redness. Yeah, well, anybody with whiter skin like me, you're left with a red mark. Anybody yeah. with a more ethnic skin, they're left with a brown mark. So that, that makes sense that you have more red marks. You know, you can certainly use Fade Bright. Right. Um, and if you're just using the normal acne products, well, you can't use the retinol while you're pregnant. No. You can, it depends on your doctor. Yeah. Yeah, we I always wouldn't. recommend double checking. I would physician. try Serum 15. Mm, That'll get choice. your skin turned over. That even has some Mandelic in there. Yeah. That'll get your skin turning over to get that discoloration off and healed. Um, you know, AB cleanser every day. You can definitely use Fade Bright. That is okay. Vitamin C is okay. B Complex. SPF. B Complex is great for the acne. That'll help to prevent it in the first place. Perfect. For sure. All right. So, Aubrey Thompson from Maine. I think M-A is Maine. M-A, Maine? Oh, or Maine, Massachusetts. There's too many M's. I don't I'm know so that sorry, one. sorry, Aubrey. I'm not sure. <laughs> Just, okay. All right. <laughs> Graphically so, challenged. I know, right? Geographically challenged. So true. Okay, so, hi, I'm 50 years old, and I have very smooth complexion with very few wrinkles. My age started to show on my neck and chest. I have some deep grooves in my neck and chest. Um, has a lot of redness and capillaries, I believe, from past sun damage. I think my chest is a little bit sensitive to retinol. What else can I use for my face and chest to fight these signs of aging? Smooth, few wrinkles, mm -hmm. age on neck and chest. I mean, I would say, obviously, retinol every single day, right? You're a little, a sensitive, little sensitive to retinol, to retinol, but that's okay. I mean, I don't know what percent you have. You yeah. don't have to use the strongest retinol. Cut down, get the get the point 0.10 and if you're yeah. using point 0.10 and that's too strong for you mix it with something else right mix it with i would mix it with like one of the copper serums or something because a a good thing from copper is that it can strengthen the capillary formation in your skin and that could potentially help you from getting more broken capillaries and what things did andrea use our facebook moderator she had posted some chest pictures was she doing she series of fade jesner bright. and fade bright she had some really good triple treat. I think she was using triple treat. We'll have to go back and look at to, that. Yeah, I would have to look but at that. I Facebook know she Guru like page. swears by Fade Bright every single day. Yeah. And, and she's one of those that can use Jesner and, and says, it doesn't even like hurt. I'm too. like, I don't understand. Right, exactly. I don't understand you. But I would say, yeah, definitely. The triple treat, maybe. Yeah, Fade and a Bright. milder peel. If you want to do a milder peel, Mandelic or Lactic would be really good. 
serum 15 if that retinol even cutting it down is still too irritating you can use like serum 15 even every other day so you yeah. know people think like oh i have to use it every single day you don't have to use it every single day use it no. every other day use it every second day use it every third day just as long as you're getting it into your regimen it's going to do what it's got to do all right our next question comes from toronto client's name is twinkle oh thank you all right so fitzpatrick three or four my arms and neck have become very dark Compared to the rest of my face and body, what shall I do? So, so tan. Her arms and neck. So her arms and neck have become very dark. But not the face. Mm. Are you putting some black on your face compared to the rest of That's interesting because we don't know why, you yeah. know? And, and if it's sun, then obviously SPF and fade bright and things like that. But there are other things that you have to also be wary of, you know, different sicknesses or ailments and stuff. And I can't remember which one causes like that darkening. Usually that's around the neck. Mm -hmm. No, I forgot which one arms, that too. is. Maybe she's just more conscious of her products on her face and is not kind of feathering them down onto the neck. For sure. I mean, it could be. I mean, I'm just trying well, to Well, yeah, because in, in anything that you do put on your face, you should always do on your neck and your chest. Yes. And if you've got extra, put it on your hands. Yep. You know, always use it up. So, I mean... Since we're not 100% with mm -hmm. this, if you're just getting darker, it sounds to me like you could be tanning, yeah. getting some tan there. Get some SPF 50 or yeah. higher. Yeah, agreed. Yep. Okay, so next question comes all the way from Singapore. Ooh. Which peel is best for cystic acne? I am a fan of the Jesner and TCA, and why cystic acne appeared to the skin after chemical peels? Well, anytime you do a peel, obviously, if you are acne prone and your acne is not under control fully, right. um, when you do a peel, you've got lots of clogs all the way going down. Mm -hmm. One's going to come out next week. One's going to come out the week after. Three more are going to come out the next week. Either they come up regularly week by week. But if you do a peel, you're taking way more skin off at one time. So now right. all of a sudden, you're gonna get pimples that from one, two, three weeks from now, once. there they are on your face. So generally speaking, it's about a five week cycle and acne, acne is about a five week cycle. So if you're using products every single day, like AB cleanser and vitamin B complex twice a day. And if you're using retinol every single night, something like that will keep your skin clear. And then when you do appeals, you really aren't going to run into that. Maybe you might get like one or something if you have a strange clog from something, but you have to have your daily regimen on point here and you will get through it. Yeah, and once it's through. out, you're just you're just yeah. gonna have beautiful be skin. Surprised. And then one, one day the marks will all fade away yes. and you'll just have gorgeous skin. Just be on top of it. That's why we say take a before picture because sometimes you don't see the little gradual changes that are happening nope. in your skin and then you'll look back at a picture that comes up maybe in your Facebook memories or something oh, yeah. from a year ago and yep, you'll yep. be like, wow, you know, my, I really do my skin. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. People yeah. don't realize how much is changing until they see a picture. That's so like, true. Take a picture now. Take a picture in a month or two, then continue it on and keep using your regimen and doing your peels and you will be amazed. Okay, next question comes from New York from Rosalie. She has dry skin. I have dry skin and I have melasma. Can you help me? What do you suggest for that, Rosalie? Dry skin and melasma. Well, you know, for any kinds of melasma, you always need the skin turning over. So use things like retinol um, or an acid if you can't use that, like Serum 15. Mm -hmm. Use a daily one of our daily um, cleansers. Then I would make sure that you've got some Fade Bride and or vitamin C. I found that vitamin C can be very helpful for the melasma that I tend to get in the summertime. Right. I don't know if it's from heat or I whatever. Think it helps I get like combat more. future aging or future oh, and sun damage with the UVA, UVB. Yeah, and it's so anti aging, as you say, aging. Absolutely. So anti aging, stimulating collagen and stuff. I would use things like that. Obviously, SPF 50, big hat because yep. melasma, you know, it's hormonal. Um, and then think about some peels. If you want just little to no visible flaking, do something like a lactic peel or a mandelic peel. Jesner is great if it's really problematic. It's mm -hmm. a deeper peel that's layerable. That one can really help get some, um, some melasma off, but you have to be like on it every day with your inhibitors and your SPF. Okay, this one comes from Jan from Washington State. She's a Fitzpatrick too. She says, when applying TCA to my arms and hands, it is usual for the peeling process to take two to two and a half weeks. 
because the full process takes longer than it does for my face, yep. which is one week, should I wait a longer period of time between treatments? Yep. I usually apply two layers of TCA 13 to my face and two layers of 20 to my arms and hands. I usually do the TCA treatment about every six to eight weeks. Thanks in advance. Oh, well, she's waiting a long enough time then. Yeah, yeah four weeks is average, and it does take longer for your body to turn over. Yes. It's, 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 yeah, that's something to be expected. Usually most people don't even start peeling until about 10 days. Right. And then it goes on. Like I found when I did that body peel, I still had dry skin into the fifth, week right because you can peel think you're finished peeling and peel again and then you peel again and you're like oh my huh yeah right yeah, I thought, yeah. especially i think that happens a lot like when yeah. people early peelers i've right. noticed a lot like when i'm watching the comments in the guru group somebody will be like oh i did my peel and i'm all peeled on day two i'm like come on no and then all of a sudden three days later i'm peeling again yeah because yeah. <laughs> you, you're not done peeling right it's, no. it's gonna take you for sure five days minimum Okay, moving along. This one comes from <clears throat> Lubick, Texas. I believe the first name is Sheer. Mm -hmm. and or Sherry? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Sherry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Fitzpatrick, two to three. Uh, when is it appropriate after a peel to use microcurrent? Well, and obviously we don't make any of these machines or equipment and stuff. We always recommend that you are alternating these. You know, don't use yeah. them together. I can't state an exact date. I don't know, yeah. uh, you know, microcurrent. It could be okay. LED lights are fine even right. immediately after a peel because they're not really doing anything. It's just a light. But, you know, microcurrent, radio frequency, all those kinds of things, you really need to alternate those. Right. You know, For do sure. a peel this month and do your, 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 those treatments the next month. And let each of them work individually. Yeah, you definitely want, don't want to do anything over peeling or flaking skin. Or no. You want to make give yourself enough time. Give your skin that time to regenerate. For sure. Okay, so Leah from Texas, I would like to know exactly what I need to do a peel on my legs for, what, what she needs to know exactly what she needs to do a peel on her legs for crepey sun damaged skin. Well, I would suggest prepping with something like, you know, triple the 15% acid body wash mm -hmm. and the 25% acid triple treat. These are things that you can use every single day to help thin the dead skin. So when you do apply your peel, it's going to penetrate evenly and deeper. And then obviously there's, you know, kind of two peels to choose from. There's mm -hmm. Jesner and then there's TCA. I tend to gravitate towards Jesner for hyperpigmentation or Jesner and TCA, like mm -hmm. a couple layers of Jesner and a couple layers of maybe like a TCA 20. I think that would do really, really well. You can do that once a month. And, you know, obviously it's going to take six to eight months for sure. Do you see big changes? Right. Take a photo, especially with sun damage, because you may be watching this freckle mm. and like 14 other freckles went away and you're like, it's not working. It's still there. Good thought. That's what photos are for. You know, when you put them side by side, you'd be like, wow, okay, yeah. this yeah. is working. I'm going to keep going. Yep. Keep it up. Okay. Julie from Michigan has dry skin. Fitzpatrick too. I've been doing TCA 20 for a while, four layers. And now apply Dream Peel as my last layer. My question is, if I wait 15 minutes versus five minutes in between each layer, will the peeling be more intense or deep? Don't want to extend time if waiting longer between layers doesn't really do anything. <clears throat> it doesn't really do anything. Yeah. But I find that I will do that anyways, just because I like my skin to calm down before yeah. I put another layer on. Right. And there are times where I've put something out, and it was the Jesner especially. <laughs> when I did that, the Jesner and the TCA, well, I probably waited 10, 15 minutes right. before I put the next layer yeah, because I was like, my your, skin still yeah. hurt. You I need to get to your wait. nerve up to put on that <laughs> next oh. layer. Come on, I can do it. <laughs> Right? But yeah, yeah. I, it, it's not going to, you can't do a peel, you know, a layer yeah. today and a layer tomorrow. But yeah, you can wait 5, 10, 15 minutes in between layers if you want we to. We want you just to wait that five minutes for sure to give it its five time to sure. break down those protein bonds and all the fun stuff See if stuff you're going to get frosting. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's not going to make it any better or anything yeah. like that. It's not, right. it's not helping you in any way other than making you feel better. Yeah. Set your timer for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. If you don't need to wait, don't wait. Yeah. Don't get do it done it. with. Okay, so Kara Gonzalez <clears throat> is from San Antonio, Texas, Fitzpatrick 2. Will you please describe appropriate scars to use cross technique so I do not make a scar worse? Well, cross is the chemical reconstruction of scar. Chemical reconstruction of, of scar. Oh. Something. Darn it. I thought 
I knew it. It has to be a depressed scar. You have to have a hole, okay? A hole in your face. If you've got like a, a raised scar, that's called a hypertrophic yeah. scar. You don't want to put it on those. And cross is as a, a method, right? So right. you are these using these, yeah, these little picks. And you're saturating it. And you're pushing it in. Not not drawing blood or anything, but you're pushing it in. And it's kind of like a combination of needling yeah. and the the scar. Scar structure. Section. Gosh, it's really Wait. bothering me. <laughs> Chemical. Mm. <laughs> but you're you're trying to break down some of those little. Um, those little scar tissues that are holding that skin down really deep. That's why we're pushing in there a little bit. Because they a lot of times so people will use like needling for that to help break up scar tissue, but this is kind of a combination of that. You're not gonna make it worse if you just follow the directions and dip it into the 30 and poke it in there and then take it out and call it a day. You know, if you're trying to do anything other than that, you could potentially make it worse because right. I don't know what you're doing. But um, your goal is to break down that scar tissue on that's the it. inner walls of that. Yeah, not all over your yeah, face. Yeah, the inner walls of that ice pick scar. So that's your goal. That's why she said get the toothpick really dry because you really yeah. don't want, you know, the polka dot effect. No. You want just no, to and get that it inside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then keep in mind that you're using a super high percentage of acid. So when you put it in there, talking about looking worse, mm -hmm. it even says this in the video, it is going to look worse okay. for a little bit. Yeah. It's going to be red. It might look bigger. That's mm -hmm. a big one. Yeah. It's red. It looks bigger than it was before. Well, yeah, because you just uh, put acid on every yeah. wall inside of that. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to regenerate. You're going to get this little scab. Then, the, you know, that skin's going to grow up when the scab falls off. Now the skin is filled up more. And then, you know, when five It's actually weeks, a good sign if it looks worse because then yeah, you know things are happening, you know, it and that's really when is. the Supercop 2X comes into play. And yep, yeah, start using this. Like if you've got depressed scars, sometimes you don't even have to do the cross. I mean, this Supercop 2X every yeah. single night before bed, this will help. Serum 15, that will help. You know, it doesn't have to be the chemical peel. You might end up needing that depending on how big your scars are, though. Okay, next one comes from Shelly. She has normal skin from San Diego, uh, Fitzpatrick 2. Should I use Dermasnap all over my face or just in certain areas? Everywhere. Yep, that's an all over yep. face cream. Yeah, I realize it's got like, you know, Botox alternatives and things in there, but right. that, that can work everywhere. You, where do you get Botox? You can get Botox all over your face. Yeah. You know, so it's, it, it's all it's going to do is help to make those lines a little bit finer. So yeah, use it everywhere. All right, so Lynn has combination skin. She's from Texas, Fitzpatrick, four. How long after a 13 TCA peel can I do a dream peel? I already did four TCAs at 13. I did one three nights ago. Can I do a dream peel now? No. No. If you're going to do TCA and a dream peel, you do it immediately after. Once you're done applying TCA, yeah. you rinse your TCA off and put this on or... Some people like to leave their TCA on, that's yeah. fine, and then put the dream peel on, and then six to eight hours, you rinse it all off. If you want to do them separately, then you do one one month and one the next month. Right. But you don't wait a few days and do this one. It just doesn't work that way. It has to be done at the same time. In three days, your skin's already drying. Yeah. This isn't even going to penetrate well. Nope, it's not. So immediately or next month. Okay. Next question comes from California. <clears throat> Client's name is Pooks. Oh, we have a pookie that comes in here too, or pookie something. Cookie. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's cookie. Cook, cookie. It's yeah. cookie, not pookie. Yeah. But this lady's name is Pooks, or gentlemen. I would like <laughs> to add extra acid to an acid plus hyaluronic product from my stash of glycolic to make it a little bit more potent. Your thoughts on this, please. So I think she wants to add acid, uh -huh. add glycolic into. And hyaluronic, like our hyaluronic, like our serum 15, that right. is acid and hyaluronic. Now, mind you, that was formulated to right. withstand that acid. That way. I don't know Could neutralize. what's your hyaluronic plus acid. If it's our product, mm. then you probably could add a little bit more. If it's somebody else's, it may not be formulated for that. So I would test it out in something very small because it could just completely break down your formula and turn into a, you know, a liquid yeah. and separate or lots of things could happen. Try our serum 15 or serum 30. Yeah, right, because then you've got 15% <laughs> acid in a hyaluronic base or 30% acid in a hyaluronic base. It's, for the most part, it's easier to use yeah. a product that's pre-formulated like stable. that. It's a stable formula. 
You yeah, know? and and even anytime you change something, it can cause things to break down. I mean, it, if we were to you know change our surfactant or something in this because of the acid, it could you know turn into a liquid or separate. Yeah. I remember years ago we had that problem when one of them separated. And we're like, what the heck's happening? Yeah, I can't remember. There's a lot was, of little yeah. tweaking that has to be done to make an acid formula work. So, I would say. It's probably easier to just apply your acid and then apply your hyaluronic if they're yeah. not mixing together well. All right, so Allison, oh, this comes all the way from Hong Kong. Mm. Wow. Uh, Fitzpatrick 4, she has dry skin. Can I numb before using a TCA 13? Yes. yes Any of the can. cane products, you know, lidocaine, prilocaine, I know there's other canes, mixed up canes. We don't sell it, but Use you can them. find it out there on. I would sell it. You yeah. know, I have never found a good distributor for right. it. We should look at that again. I, yeah, we look at we it every really once should. in a while. Every once in a while. Okay, so Florence is the customer's name. She has normal skin from New Jersey. Uh, doesn't say what her Fitzpatrick level is. I need you to recommend some of your products that can lighten my skin to glow and make me look young as well. Oh, well. Oh, my, color, uh, my color is brown and I am 60 years old. Well, and you know, if you want glowing skin, use things like red, I feel like a broken record, retinol right. <laughs> and like acids, acid cleanser, like mm -hmm. a revitalizing acid cleanser. Even just using that cleanser every day for a few days, your skin right. will probably be glowing. Retinol at night, your skin will be glowing. I would glowing. say vitamin C in the morning Vitamin too. C, yep, that's I'd say these two products are what? Like the key ingredients to, to anti-aging. So, I mean, if, if she's using those two, she should see some nice, nice dewy looking skin, I would For think. For sure, and that's what people want. Oh, and if you want a little bit more dewiness, um, hyaluronic, hyaluronic holds like a thousand times its own weight in water. So if you mm. mix like the there hyaluronic with the vitamin C, a lot of people like to do that and put it on, you'll have very dewy looking skin. That's another good combo. All right. Uh, or a peel, do a yeah. peel too. Oh, for sure. Just lactic. All right, Rosemary has combination skin. She's from North Carolina, Fitzpatrick 5. What type of peel can you do under the arm? Well, generally speaking, underarms can be really, really sensitive. I mean, even deodorants can irritate you and stuff. You can't be, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you could be using really strong peels like a Jesner or something, but that might cause too much irritation. I would suggest probably fade bright every day, once a day. Mm -hmm. And then maybe like the Lactic 50 or the Mandelic 40 if after, you know. And, and here's the thing, though. With these milder acids and body parts, I always have a hard time suggesting mm -hmm. how many times should you do this because your body peels slow. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to peel at all right. or if you're just going to get dry or you're not going to get dry. You know, with a Jesner or something, at least I know, okay, you can do that once a month. It's going to take a month for that dead skin to come off. If you're doing the lighter acids... You know, you might be able to get away with doing that once every two weeks or every three weeks. What about like triple treat lotion? You know, she could use it. It may yeah. underarm. Maybe she's meaning like under. You know, like where your arm, yeah, right. It might not rugs. be the armpit. Might I'm thinking the of the armpit. armpit where it's a little bit more sensitive. It might. But be. yeah, you could use triple treat too. My thing is, is if gosh, if you want to put deodorant on, then you know, you're putting yeah. all these products on, then you lose that. <laughs> Right. It's like one or the so other. So maybe use your deodorant in the morning and then you use your Yeah, use your, your products product while you're night. sleeping at there night. You go. There you go. Okay, perfect. All right, Jan Moore has normal skin. She's from Washington State, Fitzpatrick 2. Uh, do you think it's safe to cosmetic micro needle at 0.25 millimeter, the Regenerate Serum? I applied a TCA 13 three layers over two weeks ago and I am fully peeled now. Well, I would wait another yeah. two weeks. Yeah before you start doing this needling because you yeah. really need to give your skin time to heal. It's not even just healing. It's not like, well, I'm done peeling. Okay, you're done peeling, but that's not the whole process. Right. I think it was three layers Now your too, skin is so, busy. Yeah. Your skin is busy regenerating new mm -hmm. tissues. And if all your skin is busy regenerating new tissues, you go stab, 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 and you know, freak it out again. You're just gonna slow down the whole process. Yeah. So wait two more weeks before you do your needling. And then can you use that? You can use Regenerate, you can use um, Dr. Picard recommends the copper serums to go with needling, mm -hmm. either before, during, or after. Regenerate for sure, I would Absolutely. say after, no matter what, that's gonna help you heal really quickly. Even when I've had professional needling done with mm -hmm. a, a local friend of ours, yeah. um, she tells me, go put your Regenerate on yeah. when you're done, you know, because super healing. You know, yeah. those, I know you're looking for treatments, not just like, you know, emo oil and, and stuff. But yeah, I think it would be just fine. 
All right, so Teresa from Lakewood Ranch, Florida, um, Fitzpatrick 3, dermatologist just gave me, oh, I think we answered this one, the 12% hydroquinone, 6%, 2% niacinamide. Oh, yeah. I yeah, we did answer that one. I'm supposed to use a thin layer at night. It's a copy. I, yeah. That's the 12%. Yep. Yeah, yep, we have yep, answered yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we're going to move on. This next one comes all the way from Trinidad. Uh, Shania says, do you recommend serum 15 for overall maintenance of the skin? Brightening, help, helping, and hyperpigmentation, and pores, etc. For sure. I can't remember if we have a box of that up here. We should get one if we don't. But yeah, that has a combination of acids. It's um, it's mandelic and glycolic, and I want to say phytic and yes. vitamin C. I don't know if there's mandelic or uh, lactic in there. I can't so remember. It's it. no. But it's a nice blend of acids that will absolutely help with so many things. Anti-aging, getting that dead skin off. Um, acne because of the mandelic and stuff. That's great yeah. for everything. I would still recommend you throw some retinol in your regimen or some right. sort of vitamin A if you can because they do work differently. And they can alternate, you know, if, they're, if she's using alternate. serum 15 at night, you know, don't use them at the same night, but use no, one alternate. One day. Yep. Yeah. All right, so Marty from Michigan it has dry skin, Fitzpatrick of two. Hi ladies, I use Fade Bright one to two times per day and really like it. Plus, I use tretinoin at night three times a week. My question is, am I using it too often? Because I swear the skin around my, my eye, my, I don't know, she my say, something has, has gotten, gotten whiter. whiter. Well, I mean, it is a pigmentation minimizer. So if mm -hmm. you had, um, you know, hyperpigmented skin, it will lighten it. Now, I don't know where this area is because there's a typo there. Yeah, she doesn't say. She says, my, I swear my skin around my either eyes, mouth, nose, something yeah, has gotten something, whiter. Something got whiter. <laughs> <laughs> but it really, I mean, if you're even the least bit concerned, then just cut back down yeah, to one back. time a day. You right. know, I would suggest nighttime. She's you got know, light when you go skin. So and you're, yeah, you're really light to begin with. Maybe just use it on her dark areas only unless she's pre-treating for a peel. Yeah. Then use it all over. Oh, we're almost done. Oh, we might have some on here. We'll have to check. Okay, so Teresa from, it doesn't say, she's got a Fitzpatrick too. Is there any peel or solution to fading microneedling ink on brows? Like microblading, you mean, probably? Yeah, she like said microneedling, like, but I'm assuming it's microblading. Yeah, okay, so I've had microbladed brows. I have no eyebrows. I've had microbladed brows, and I've had tattoo brows twice. And no matter what I do, it fades away yeah. immediately. And I'm going to say it's because I use things like retinol. Mm. I use acid cleansers every day and I use peels. But you know what? I don't even put the peel on my eyebrows. Right. But it does. They, they lighten. I swear if I can get six months out of one of those, hmm. it, it hurts too much to do it <laughs> repeatedly. I just draw them on every day now because... But yeah, that stuff is going to fade it for sure. You just use anything <laughs> that we have. So it obviously doesn't go it's as going deep to as a fade. tattoo, of no. course. So, yeah. No, and I want to say, like, even though it is tattooed, even though it is going deep in the skin, it's not going as deep okay. as some of those other tattoos. Facial tattoos are way lighter. Okay. Uh, Madeline has normal skin. She's from New York, Fitzpatrick too. I am 26 years old, and due to my decision to get off of birth control a year and a half ago, the hormones were causing melasma around mm. my eyes. I have been struggling with random breakouts and hyperpigmentation from old breakouts. Are platinum skincare peels good, a good option to help me with hyperpigmentation? If so, should I be concerned it will aggravate my skin and cause more breakouts? No, when you get off birth control, your skin's going to be a mess for a while. Yeah. I mean, literally, I will say, mm. when I started this, I had just gotten off. Mm -hmm. I had gotten off birth control, got pregnant with my son, and my skin was a mess. That is literally what got me into this mess here. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I had, yeah. I had, you know, there's only four grades of acne, and I had grade three because I, I was graded at three because I didn't have a lot of cystic acne, the big, the big nodules. But uh, you just need to get yourself on a good regimen and then hopefully your hormones will bansel, ba bansel, balance yeah. out soon. But if it doesn't, go to your dermatologist because there are, there are some they things can they give can you put you things. on. They can definitely give you some things. Like, what else? Um, what did they put? Spiralactyl. Spironolactone. Yeah, there we go. That's that can was. help. And yeah. maybe... Um, yeah, for the cystic like, acne. For the cystic, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, and then I would say use something every day, obviously retinol at night, AB cleanser plus vitamin B complex two times a day. Like these are the things that I swear by. If I stopped using any of these, I feel like I would have acne again. Like these are game changers, use these and then see your dermatologist if it gets worse. And oh, peels. Okay, so salicylic 15 would be a good peel, or Jesner. Mandelic would be a good peel. Jesner, Stronger, that would be another good peel. So okay. we're done with those, but we have some questions online here we we're do. gonna answer. Uh, let's see, Marty says, after a peel, is it okay <clears throat> to put Fade Bright and your Retinol 30 on face after the last layer? Okay, so uh, like I've talked about this before, like once you wash the peel off, like your skin is so primed to accept some sort of a treatment, you know, like right. if you have hyperpigmentation, go ahead and put that fade bright on. If you have potions, put them on. So you can definitely put fade bright on after that. Now you're talking about retinol 30. Now what we usually suggest is luminosity, which is retinol 0.50. So if you have some retinol 0.50 at home, which is our luminosity, mm -hmm. you can put that on. But I do tell people too, okay, if you don't have that, and you do have one of our other retinols, go ahead and put it on. You know, that what, what this does is it kind of helps your skin to peel a little bit more aggressively. The 0.50 is obviously the best because it's strongest, but that 0.30 could be helpful too. But I wouldn't do that, you know, every single day. Once, you know, day two, day three starts hitting, your skin starts to thicken and get ready to flake and nothing's really penetrating at that point. So I would stop use of like the fade bright and stuff. Okay, so, oh. And back and forth. Oh, here. yeah. Hold, okay. I was like, keep your thing on here and then okay. just scroll down slowly. All right. So, Megan uh, Jones says, Do you have any products mm. that help with cellulite? No. Uh, let's see. Do you have any? <laughs> also, will the TV's 30 help my fine lines? I don't know. What TCA that means. 30? Oh, there we go. TCA 30 help fine Around lines. Around my knees. Well, you could. Associated with age, Fitzpatrick 2. Well, you have light skin, so mm -hmm. you, oh, I think that's because people are commenting. Pop it, pop that's why it's popping. Yeah. Um, you can definitely use any of the peels on your body. So TCA 30, if you're going to do a peel on your legs or your lower legs and then end it at the top of your knee, I would. That's going to help. I mean, is it going to get rid of all the wrinkles on your knee? Probably not, I mean, because right. you have all those little wrinkles. That's just skin folding. Maybe but a crepey skin escape we have as well. That's a, that's a good idea, too. Yeah. People like to use that uh, every day. Okay. With um, emo oil on top see. for more moisture. All right. Does Fade Bright make your skin turn over more quickly? It doesn't really play a part in that. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of azelaic and kojic acid in there, but that's not acid at a percentage that's really going to turn your skin over. This is alcohol-based, so it penetrates really deep, so it really doesn't matter how much dead skin you have on there. Um, but no, it's just going to help with your hyperpigmentation, whether you have that skin or not. Okay, so Linda says, I live in Arizona, and I have both the Mandelic and the TCA 13, but have been afraid uh, to bite the bullet and do them, even though I purchased them a while ago. Is it too late to peel for me since the weather here is already in the 70s or 80s? Should I do uh, Mandelic and then wait until winter to do the TCA? Never did peels before. So this is always a big debate yeah. in the guru group as to can I do a peel in yeah. the summertime? Aren't we all done with our peels? And there's always like a little bit of bickering back and forth. And to be honest, there are a lot of countries, there are a lot of states that are hot all year long. Yeah, For it could sure. be hotter in the summer, but it's still hot. I mean, we're talking like 80s and yeah. stuff. It is warm and you can still do a peel all year long. We have people do it we all the time. That never, they just do, they'll switch it up. They'll do a weekly peel maybe in the summer. They'll do the heavier peels in the winter or they just go on with their Yeah, they don't regimen. know. They're like, it's sunny yeah. here every day. I live in Hawaii. Yeah. It's they sunny every single day. What am I going to do? Yeah. Big hat. Yeah. SPF 50. And remember, SPF 50 is not going to last you all day if you're outside. If you're yeah, outside reapply. for like, I don't even remember the time. If it's like 30 minutes or an hour or something, you're supposed to reapply again. Yeah. So get a spray if you don't want to be lubing up with lotion, you know, powder. Yeah, that was it. Um, the last thing was Marty had said it was her mouth that she, uh, <laughs> that, but she said thank you for answering her question. Oh, good. And we are all set. Yeah, and you know what we didn't do? We didn't say who we were today. Oh, well, they know. So just in case you don't know who we are. 
<laughs> I'm Jennifer. And, and I'm Dora. Dora. <laughs> and we will be here again to answer your questions. If you have more questions, go to peeluniversity.com and submit them on the submit a question link. And if you asked a question today, you can also go there to see your answer or our YouTube page or our website. I mean, they're everywhere. So perfect. You we'll have a soon. great day. Bye. Bye-bye.